All right. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to this week's, this Monday's Ask Jake Anything. Um, you know, these are some of my favorites because it's just me and just you, right? What we might get into, Shelby, I hope you're ready. Get this link ready. We might do some live hop-ins. We might get some of you guys in here answering, taking your questions live. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen a little bit too, just talking through some best practices. I think, you know, if you guys didn't get a chance to, to cop it last week, um, we'll, we'll drop the link in the comments right now. Uh, on Thursday, we released our modern outbound playbook. And so in this outbound playbook, one of the things that I got very, very tired of was that I would see a lot of advice. And, and hey, look, sometimes I probably gave that advice, right? Where I would say, look, you know, video is important. LinkedIn's important. This is important. And it's like, well, okay, yeah, Jake, uh, but how do I actually execute the plays? And so we started working on this about, I think like end of July, early August, where Molly Mitchell on our team, Molly handles all of our outreach deployments. So if you all don't know, one of the things that we do very successfully at Scaled is sales technology. And we've done now well over 100 outreach, 120 plus sales lofts. So we've done more sales engagement overhauls and implementations in any company in the world not named outreach or sales loft so when it comes to modern outbound i really feel like my team and, and our org is is really at the forefront of what the best of the best of the best organizations are doing and so in this format this format is pure q a so let's see we've got some folks that are starting to roll in here uh what's up gerard I think we've got, who is that? Is that, uh, yes, Miss Aaron Wells. What's up, Aaron? I hope you're doing amazing. Um, drop in your role. Do me a favor in the comments real quick. Just drop me in your role um, and maybe like, uh, you know, mid-market. Uh, just help me understand like where your buyer is. Are they transactional? Is it, you know, a mid-market buyer enterprise? So just drop me your role and drop me like who your buyer is. So I'm going to try to get real tactical today and try to get very specific on a lot of the plays that we're going to drop in. So again, I really appreciate all of you. Um, as Shelby just said here, um, please drop your questions in because in these formats, my goal is to really try to give you all as much insight as I can. Shelby, can you go ahead and drop the link to for the Modern Outbound Playbook? And then I'm going to do a quick screen share here, everyone. Um, so you can uh, you can share my screen. Let me see if I can get this thing cranking. Um, Maybe. Ah, there we go. Right. There we go. Uh, application window. Let me pull this bad boy out. There we go. So I'm going to try to walk through some of the stuff that I think is very, 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 very important. So as y'all are going through this, just what are some things that I think about modern outbound and kind of like what's changed, what's important, what's not important? What I think is more important, et cetera. So, all right. So we're going to hop in here. You're seeing an infinite window. That is me. That's not good. So let me let me see if I can fix this real quick. We haven't done, I haven't done a bunch of sharing. All right. So we've got BDR Enterprise, Jeff Heckler, Landed Expand, Enterprise, Customer Success, founder keep keep the keep the roles coming in so we've got a mix here sales we've got a mix we've got a lot of people talking enterprise so i'll try to spend some time there let me see if i can um uh, smallest municipalities to the largest all right yeah i wish man there's something about selling into government selling into cities is a little bit different but selling into government i've always been like ugh. <laughs> i've always been like Oh my gosh. Cause it's just so there's so much like bureaucracy and shit that I just hate. Okay, let's see if I let's see if I nailed it this time. I think I might have. Let's see. Let me see if I can see it here. Yes. All right. I figured it out. So anyway, so I I'm gonna talk about some of the basics here about what it means to land your accounts and to grow accounts in some modern outbound plays. Again, drop your questions in here now. Jake, how do I set more meetings with these people? Whatever it ends up being, drop them in there now. Now is the time. So one of the most important activities that I can tell you in every modern play is to tier your accounts, meaning developing different plays for your tier one. Let's say those are your biggest of the biggest, your tier two, those are somewhere in the middle, and your tier three. The biggest issue that I see right now is that people try to, um, they try to run, they build these complex plays and they try to run them to everybody. You can't. 
real simple 80 20 rule you know your your top 20 percent of accounts is where you should be running your most complex plays then kind of the middle 60 you're running kind of a mix of like bulk personalization smaller amounts of personalization chelsea lol yes i know look that's what selling to the government's like and then you've got your other ones where it's more of nurture and i think that that's the other thing i'll say is like look you know keegan i know you're in bdr and enterprise we've got a bunch of enterprise sellers in here some founders one of the biggest mistakes I see in the modern outbound playbook is a lack of nurture. That you spend all this time to go engage, 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 engage. And then someone says no or something happens and we don't have a nurture stream. Or the nurture stream isn't like, you know, again, and think of just very basic, like I said, like fully customized, bulk customization with a little bit, and then basically automated, right? For these, like, I'll get to these accounts later type people. And then nurture is the same way, right? Hot medium cold maybe you're hot you're reaching out to every you know uh three to four weeks your mediums every 60 to 90 days but you can build all of these out in sequences all of them so i really want to encourage of you you know again like this is the boring shit i feel like so many people want like life secrets they want like jake what's the silver bullet whatever it is and like nine times out of ten the answer is like the boring shit it's like better discovery questions, tiering your accounts. So I just want to call this out before I get into some of the plays that I think we, you know, that, that, that we should be thinking about here. Um, just blow it up a little bit. So that's what's up. So again, think tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, think nurturing um, you know, as a part of this as well too. You know, what I would say is like the other thing that I see so many people mess up is just personalization. Guys, personalization, and again, toss a quick thumbs up or whatever if you agree. Um, personalization is not insert first name, insert company name. Okay, guys, that's not personalization. <laughs> that's that's like somewhere between what I was saying for tier two and tier three. It's garbage. If all your sequences do is show first name and company name and fake ass industries, you're not. That's why you're not setting any meetings, right? Why you're not getting meetings is this exact reason. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, kind of where we see different kind of things and where they're working. So let's talk about cold email, for example. Okay, so cold email, I'm just going to tell you all straight up in email right now, if you are not being personalized, it is super difficult to cut through the noise. Go talk to your boss or your boss's boss, your CEO, and ask them how many sales emails they get every day. Okay, guess what? It's a lot. And so if you don't have that first, that first thing being something personalized, and I'll get into some examples of that, it's the number one reason you're not cutting through the noise. You know, it's, it's too many people are just focused on doing this, first name, company, and title. And, and, and they think it's customized. It's not, okay? So for all of you, you got to think about this. You know, what is something personal? Think about it. We as humans, we are people first, employees second, and then we care about the company third. So you got to try to connect with me at each in, and your ability to connect at those, those first two levels is what will have a dramatic impact on your ability to set more meetings. So let me try to see if we've got, um, if we've got some questions. So again, drop your questions in here. So I know where you all want to take it. Don't just you know, be a passive bystander. We've got like how many people we've got joining us right now. We've got about almost 50 people. What's up everybody. Appreciate you joining me on a Monday. I'm working today Then I'm actually, if you can see, I went and commandeered a hotel um, meeting room. You know, it's like nobody's using this shit. So we're down in San Antonio at La Cantera, having a little fun with the fam re the rest of this week. So some other things to think about, um, CTAs. This is a big one on cold emails. I'm telling you the number one CTA, call to action, if y'all don't know, the number one call to action, just so you know, I literally have changed the way that I've been doing sales for 17 years when I saw this, that when I saw this research come out, um, the best CTA we're seeing, and maybe it's COVID, I, I'm, whatever it is, is instead of saying date and time, date and time is the second one. Hey, John, let me know how next Thursday at 2 PM looks for you. That's the, that's the number that's, that used to be the number one. That's what I would always do. Never say, how does next week look? How does next week, Jake, it's screwed. You know how busy I am next week, as opposed to saying Thursday at three or whatever it is. Let me tell you what the, what is working the best right now though. It's saying, let me know if this topic is top of mind. I want, and I, I'll send you some additional details. And if it makes sense, we'll set up time to connect. That's it. So getting a yes to, hey, if this is top of mind, let me send you details. Best call to action. So that's it. That's what's up, everyone. Cold calling, my friends. 
cold calling is not dead. Do not believe the hype. It is bullshit. Now, what what, what some people, you know, here's the thing. I, maybe I'm saying the same thing as the people that say cold calling is dead. I think when you're using these other channels, you're not actually making like cold calls your only touch point. But it's certainly not dead. Okay, um, in the ebook, um, you should go ahead and click to download Chelsea or uh, not Chelsea. Uh, uh, Shelby dropped it in, um, and you can check out. We got a video from my man Morgan Inger in there talking about opening up calls. Um, again, do your research. Again, a lot of the times it's like um, you know we're doing some very clear outreach around X Y Z topic. It seemed like this is top of mind for you, etc. Next, LinkedIn. Obviously, all of you are using LinkedIn. You're on LinkedIn Live right now, so I know you're on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we've seen some success of people following hashtags, not to get content plays, but just to just to research trends and things that are happening. Um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator is just a treasure trove. You know, for all of you, there's a couple of things that I would suggest all of you do in Sales Navigator is they've made some new feature advancements in just the last month to the homepage where every day you can just filter by lead shares. You can filter by change jobs. So LinkedIn Sales Navigator is really a strong um, component of most sequences we're building out. Um, and then there's video. So and the, these are really the four things I'm going to talk about today uh, in our next one. So we're going to be doing this every quarter. So guys, this is silly. So what we're going to be doing, and if you're a BDR, let me hop back over to LinkedIn. If you're a BDR, I want you to get really, really, really excited right now. So we're going to be dropping these modern outbound plays every single quarter. Okay. and what we're going to be doing for next quarter is crowdsourcing. So if you are a BDR and you have a play that's working, and again, you're going to have to submit results. I need to know open rates, reply rates, and meeting rates. We are going to, we are launching a contest for Q1, basically for the Q1, the first 2020, where first place, and this is not a popularity contest. This isn't about nominating Keegan because he's your buddy. This is, we're going to look at results. $1,000 for the first place of the SDR, 500 for second place, 250 for third place. So we are going to be bringing together in modern, and by the way, this modern outback, outbound playbook was also results-based from our clients and friends where we saw the results people were getting, okay? So this isn't like we pulled in the cool plays or the interesting plays. No, we pulled in the plays that are generating real meetings. So for next quarter, we're going to be doing the same thing. So instead of doing this whole like, who's the best SDR? No, we're going to be saying like, look, we're going to pay you, give us your best plays. So if you're an SDR out there, you feel like you have the best plays or you have your team, tag your team. If they want to make $1,000 just by sharing the things they're already doing and we can make it anonymous if you want, that wouldn't be very fun. Um, but again, I want all of you to jump in um, you know, and really think about it. So, okay. So we've got some questions starting to roll in. Um, take a minute, really know and understand the person. That's 100% right, Catherine. You nailed it. Too many people are just jumping in. And the key is, you know, if you don't know your buyer persona, just start asking questions. Go sit in with CS. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Um, Rana Saha, what's going on, Rana? Hope you're doing amazing. Mr. Mitchell asks, what's the best way to structure a cold email? I'll get into that one. Um, we should have more information, which is why people talk about cold calling being dead. That's right. That's exactly right, Dale. I don't know why you know, we have the access to the information. So let me talk about video real quick. <clears throat> so why do I think video is so important? One, especially because we don't have face-to-face. -face. Being able to send a video, I am telling you, most people, I don't, I'm a, this is, the, we call these Jake stats, okay? Just so you know, and I'll call out Jake stats. Jake stats are like where I'm 80% right 100% of the time. So this is a Jake stat. I, you know, I'm guessing less than 5% of people are sending videos right now. I'd love to know if you're sending videos, toss a thumbs up. Um, or if you're nervous, drop something in the comments. Like, Jake, I I've hesitated because of this. Video, you know, again, and, and if y'all don't know, there's a pretty awesome, um, pretty awesome feature within LinkedIn. Um, if you go to your messages on the app, it's just on the app, okay? Um, and then you go to your first degree connections. There's a little voicemail button right there, okay? Or when you click on the plus, and you click on video, uh, let me try to do this, video, boom, come on, there you go. I can now send a personalized video to someone who's a first degree connection. Guys, I'm telling you, start doing this now. Video to me, it's like, why send a DM when I can send a video? You see my face, you know it's personal. There is no way right now to customize a voicemail or video on a LinkedIn DM. 
Therefore, I know every single voicemail I get and every single video I get on LinkedIn is 100% customized. So again, just some things to think about as you're going through this. So, all right, let's talk about some of the plays. These are plays that people are actually running in the field, driving hot leads. Okay, so this one, I'm actually, you know what I'm, I'm gonna come back to this one. This is about driving upsells. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, the first one I'm gonna go to is the LinkedIn one. And then we can come back to it uh, as a part of it. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let me skip ahead. Previous customer. Oh wait, did I skip ahead? Yeah, I think I skipped ahead. All right, go back. Okay, there's the customer obsessed play. Three one. Let me go find three two. Uh, 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 personalized LinkedIn. Here we go. Okay, so some of the things that go into this play, and, and there's a lot of different variations of this that I'll I'll kind of teach you all as we go through this. But this is like basically almost like a pure LinkedIn play, and I want to kind of walk through different ways to use LinkedIn as a part of this. I might even pop out a sales nav. Um, but again, Team Link, man, nobody is using Team Link right now. I just don't get it. Like, it just shows you who on your team already knows somebody there. I feel like in sales, sometimes we like the hard road. It's like, yeah, we could get a referral, but that's not really doing it. It's like, no, dude, just be lazy. Like, use Team Link. Um, so we'll talk about this. So building a list day one. So the, the other thing that I want you to see here is we build all of these into sequences. So whether you use Outreach, or you use sales loft or groove or high velocity sale, whatever you use. Okay. It doesn't, you know, again, we, we partner with outreach. We think it's the best tool in the market. I personally do too. Um, but these other tools are also really, really good. So, but the key is you build everything into a sequence, right? Because you need to track it. I need to know what's working or what's not. So the very first one here is guess what? Guess when people are really, really likely to change job to change a new vendor when they change jobs. When you talk to tech companies, you ask them, hey, what's one of your number one reason for terms? Their main point of contact left, right? When people change jobs, they are looking to make changes. So when you build out that list, the first tab you should go to in sales nav is change jobs in the last 90 days, right? And couple that with um, posted in the last 30 days. Why? There's people that are active and people that have changed jobs. There's actually another one in here I'll add um, <laughs> to this game is there is, a, there is now a tab LinkedIn has added that says follows your company. And this is what I tell teams. I'm like, look, it, if you can't set a meeting with somebody that follows your company already, you suck. Get, hang them up. Like if I can't, if somebody is following Scaled right now and I'm the CEO of Scaled and I can't get a meeting with that person, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang up the cleats. I'm done. It's over. If someone is following your company, there's no better, I think, you know, opportunity than uh, to get those people on the phone. So, all right. So we got a lot of people joining in and getting some more questions. Um, Gerard Mitchell, yep, booked a new client again from video. James Pigeon, videos have been unreal, can attest. Shock persons aren't aware of it. Aaron says she's hesitating big time. I think you're like a lot of people, so don't don't stress it. Uh, all right. So again, um, and I, you know, just to address something uh, Yusuf just brought up here, he said, I want to try account-based outbound selling, but I'm concerned about the return on time. There's so much time put into a small number of accounts. Yusuf, that's a, I'm really glad you called this out because that is exactly what I talked about. And if you, if you did, for some reason, you didn't see the very, very beginning, as soon as I hit end, this will be in my feed. I want you to go back and watch the first few minutes where I talked about um, tiering your accounts. Don't go 100% account-based. You know, like for our team, you know, I'll give you an example. We've got an enterprise guy. And so with him, you know, he's got three blocks during the day. One of them is enterprise. The other two are a mix for like more lower, you know, like mid-market companies. So so my, my point, Yusuf, is don't go all in. You know, just spend some time tweaking it and then go into it. So that is what up. Okay, drill in the list of contacts who have recently posted on LinkedIn and interact with their post. This is it. Okay, I'm going to tell you that this is like the number one understanding on LinkedIn, just so y'all know. Most people don't get any comments on their posts. <laughs> Most CEOs, directors, VPs get no comments. And guess what? If you leave a comment on their post, they immediately are like, oh, oh, who's Aaron Wells? Who's Gerard Mitchell? Who are these people? I don't know who these people are. <clears throat> and guess what? Then if you wait, you know, again, you wait another couple of days, then you interact again, then they really are confused. Who is this person? And then you go for the direct ask, 
right? So this is one of our, our my favorite modern plays is interact and connect day one or, or connect day one, interact day two, interact day four, then come over the top with an ask, call, email, whatever that ends up being. Okay. And I love it because then I can go and let's say I'm reaching out to, uh, you know, Chelsea here is I reach out to Chelsea and I say, Hey, Chelsea, I just want to, Hey, look, you've popped up in my feed a couple of times now. I love, I absolutely, let me tell you one of the, the plays that I love. I love LinkedIn touchpoint, LinkedIn touchpoint, cold call. Let me just, I'm, I'm just going to tell you why. Maybe it's LinkedIn touchpoint, you know, comment, whatever, LinkedIn video cold call. Why? All of those things are personal interaction. A LinkedIn comment, when someone doesn't get any comments, that helps to build relationship capital, helps to build brand affinity. Then you send them a video, boom, it's one to, um, if you see me, then a cold call, you hear my voice, I hear your voice. I love LinkedIn to call. I love it. I think it's a great continuation and you can hear that authenticity when I'm like, hey, Yusuf, hey, I just want to let you know, this is Jake Dunlap. I don't know if you, you've seen me pop up a couple of times in your comments. Uh, your, your, you know, your profile came up in my feed a couple of times. Um, hey, you know, look, I saw that you're doing this. Just a quick high level about what we're up to is blah, 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 like a, a priority for you guys right now. Oh, well, yeah, it actually is a priority, blah, blah, blah. And then you just go straight into the cold call. So I just think for a lot of people, um, cold calling is not dead. The other thing I really want to challenge everyone who talks about cold calling being dead or, you know, it, it, Jake, it doesn't work as well. If you are a BDR right now, how are you ever going to be successful in sales if you've never had a conversation with someone on the phone? Guys, it's impossible. If any of you are BDRs right now, and I know we've got some in here, how can you possibly go into sales if you can't have a conversation with someone on Zoom or via phone? Uh, pro tip, you can't, okay? So myth busted, you can't, okay? So um, commenting, Gerard says that he likes commenting on promoted posts. Gerard, I, I, I don't know if you stole that play from me. I do it too. I haven't ever seen anything come from it. I just like to do it. It's like fun for me. Um, so, okay, so there you go. That's the LinkedIn only play, maybe following it up with a call. Previous customer, oh my gosh. This is, a, there's a lot of people that, that flag that you're enterprise sellers, okay? If you are an enterprise seller and you sell a product, and let's say you don't work at like an early, early stage startup. You work at like a growing company or a growing startup. There is a very high likelihood that one of your previous customers is at, if that company is a mid-market company with you know 500, 1,000 employees or a big enterprise, there is a very high likelihood there is somebody who's maybe even in the department who is a previous customer. Goes back to what about Team Link? Why are we trying to make this shit so hard? Why do we like to just go pure cold outbound? Why wouldn't we try to use previous customers, right? And maybe they weren't a customer, but again, maybe that person wasn't the actual buyer, but they worked in the accounting department or the HR department, whatever you sell your product into. So then that person right? You can reach out to that person and say, Hey, I worked with you. Anyway, I'll get into the, I'll get into the play here. Again, starts with LinkedIn, right? Building a list, people that use the products. Again, previous company, the previous company equals like a list of your current customers that are in their segment. So in LinkedIn sales nav, you go build a list and it says previous company of their employment. It's, it's, it's a filter. And you list out your top companies that are current customers. So you, you can, I'll just, I don't want to keep explaining it, but hopefully you get out. Again, same thing. You go interact with their post. Then again, come over the top with an email. Email, LinkedIn, whatever you want to do. Hey, I noticed that you use this. So again, here's what we're trying to do. And I want to be very clear. Guess what? If the people you're reaching out to aren't on LinkedIn, skip. Just skip ahead to calls and emails and video, <laughs> right? So it's like the, the whole point of a lot of our modern plays is this. If your buyers are and are, are on LinkedIn, why wouldn't you spend the first seven or eight days building some relationship capital versus going straight to cold? I'm just telling, there's just no reason not to do it. There's none. You know, the amount of people, I mean, for all of you who are doubting or all of you who have, um, you know, questions or are nervous, just go look at the comments here. You got people two for two with video, two for two on Friday with video, boom, Glenn, making it happen. You know, draw like commenting on promoted posts, right? You know, Rutledge talking here about spam email marketing just isn't working. 
Um, so this is it. Oh, my man, Matt Cross is on here. Guys, just so you know, Matt Cross, who's on here, go follow Matt Cross. Okay. He just, yes, build this and sells. Have users. Matt Cross, and Matt's already shared this. Matt, just so you guys know, Matt is generating 10 plus meetings a month with VPs and above of companies doing over 200 million in revenue. For those of you who are in enterprise or mid-market sales, that's your dream. Wait, I'm getting 10 plus meetings with VPs. And I'm telling you how Matt is doing this is LinkedIn. And Matt has some of the best calls to action. Matt, and actually, if you don't mind, Matt, Matt's call to action at the end is, is one of the calls to action that I gave you all at the very beginning, which is that one that's like a, um, uh, like, hey, if, there, if you, if it's like this topic is top of mind, I'm probably butchering it. Matt has a very specific way that he ends his LinkedIn DMs that has just been crushing it. So Matt, if you don't mind, um, if you don't mind sharing, um, there you go, Matt. You got another follower from Muhammad Awan. Um, but Matt, if you don't mind sharing, I think it, it could be interesting for some people. Um, so again, previous customer, why not? Why not just look at a previous customer? Okay, let's go back to video. So let's talk about using video. Again, what I want all of you to do is this. Shelby and Shelby, maybe we can just drop it again. Uh, this is on our website. <laughs> you guys can just come and download it um, you know, for free. It, it just it's, it's all in there. And these are, again, are the exact plays that people are doing, right? Hyper-personalized video shared via email or LinkedIn. Again, if you're a first-degree connection with someone, you can send a personalized video one-to-one. -one. If you're not, then you got to default to email, right? It's day three, interact with a post on LinkedIn and send a follow-up email to the video, right? So much of this, guy, it's just about making people feel like you're not a robot. <laughs> that, that, that is the sad, pathetic truth of where outbound is today. That the bar is just don't sound like a robot, right? If I send you a personalized video, then three days later, and you don't need to know that I have this all scripted out. You don't know. They, they don't know you have this scripted out. I then comment on your post. I'm like, oh my goodness. I can't believe that John Smith's content just popped up my feed. Yeah, I check for it every day, right? And then I come back with a call. So again, personalized video day one. LinkedIn interaction or follow-up email day three, cold call slash phone day seven. So again, this goes back to cold calling. I'm not just like calling with nothing, calling after. Day 12, second video, okay? The other thing, I, I, again, like this is the, this video play is really great. I just realized I forgot something about the, the current customer play, but I'll, give, I'll come back to it. So video. So hopefully this, again, this is a very tactical, easy to action on. Again, if your prospects aren't linked in, just skip step to the next step. Set up all these different variations in your sequence. Then if you get to John and John's not active in LinkedIn, just skip step and go to the next step. So again, all of this stuff is you can build it out in a sequence or cadence. You can track it. You can... Um, not have to remember because that's the thing i think why I, I i see a lot of really basic plays is that leaders can't track it and so they're like well if i can't track it i heard a saying what was this thing uh what was the saying i heard it was like if you can't track it well there's like if you can't track it it doesn't matter which is just complete bullshit um like track brand impact like you just can't track the impact of brand it's just not possible um etc so um so here you go, Matt Cross. I have a couple of ideas around blank that I'd like to share. Worth connecting to learn more if you're open to it. You know, and then, you know, Matt gets a ton of people. Yeah, it's fine. Send me some stuff over. And this is what this is what has been working for him. You know, and this isn't like, you know, smoke and mirrors. So again, video, I think you're seeing enough people here in the comments dropping, you know, feedback on video. So I hope that you all do it as well too. This has been helpful. Um, you know, I hope this has been helpful. Make sure to share this with your network too. Um, warm, active nurture. So this goes back into nurturing. Why? Man, ugh. the amount of pipeline, if you've been in, let's say if you just start a job, if you start to then actively nurture people as they say no or not now, man, when you get to month four, five, six, and anybody who's in sales knows this too, right? It's like you get those people who start to come back you can start to get to a third of your number every month by just activating old people. And that's why so, many, so often right now, we're so focused on the short game that how am I going to generate meetings today? We're not trying to de-stress ourselves for 
month four, month five, month six, man, I just want to start to get lazy. Because if I know if I connect with all these people on LinkedIn, I produce content for them, I nurture them, I know these people just come on back. And that's great. Let's say I'm supposed to set, you know, X number of qualified meetings. I know I'm going to get 25 to, a, you know, you know, roughly a quarter to a third of that from just old people. Great. That means the amount of work I've got to do is, you know, much, 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 much easier. Okay. So this is just delayed following up. And again, it's about adding value, right? So again, let's say 15 days later, 35, 50, 75, 90. So, so I want you to look at these plays marketing content, case study, ebook, you know, marketing, whatever it might be. The, and this, I would call this a hot nurture. This would be somebody who he expressed some amount of interest. They're going to be interested in the relatively near future. If not, I might extend this and it might be more like six months or a year even, and I might space some things out. This, this strategy, I'm not touching base. I'm not checking in. I'm not catching up. I'm adding value every step. And that's, that's what it takes today. What it takes today to be successful is adding value. The noise ratio is so high. I got time to check in. Matt, I have time to catch up or touch base. But if you're making me, there, there's, I was talking to, who was I talking to? Matt Cameron. If you all didn't see it on Wednesday of last week and Shelby, we can drop a link to the, the YouTube video from me and Matt, if you don't mind. Um, Matt Cameron and I um, talked about um, get enterprise meetings. We talk about running enterprise deals, what it takes to run enterprise deals. It, but this this statement is true. He talks about CEOs and, and, and C-levels take meetings with people that make them smarter. I think he said something like that, that know what I need to know or something like that. But I always said like that make me smarter. As an executive, I'm trying to stay in the forefront. I'm trying to outflank the competition. I'm trying to grow market share. I'm trying to competitively differentiate. I'm trying to make sure that I'm seeing ahead. So I want to make you smarter. You know, checking in, touching base, talking about admin features, all that, that's just noise. Okay. That's just straight noise. So those are some of the core new plays. Okay. So those are some of the core plays that we've been running on a consistent basis that we're seeing, you know, success with. So again, there's that warm, active nurture, right? There's the video play. There's the previous customer play. There's the personalized with LinkedIn. And then there's the current customer. This is basically like growing your current customers, right? Um, and this is for anyone who's doing land and expand. This one's amazing. There's another play that I'm going to bring up real quick. Um, that is around, let's see if I did this right. It's just me now. Yep. You got just me. <clears throat> There's another play, um, that Jeremy from lead IQ is running that is working really well. What he did is he went and partnered with his customer success, um, department. And instead of worrying about these case studies, let, let me ask you a question. How many people do you think read case studies? Like actually the whole case study, like, mm, you know what? I'm really thinking about doing business with Rutledge. I'm going to just sit down and pour through these. No, people want sound bites. They want the cliff notes, right? They're not like reading the whole case study. It's just not happening. Okay. So what Jeremy does is he goes and he'll DM a current customer on LinkedIn. This is gangster. I love this play, by the way. Another, another just like LinkedIn play that, and, and apparently it's worked really well for him. He'll then, he'll DM the customer. Let's say Matt Cross is my customer. Hey, Matt. Uh, well, Matt, Matt actually was our customer. So I, I send Matt a note. I say, hey, Matt, um, you know, I, I really enjoy your, uh, you, know, what, what, like, you know, working with you, et cetera. Can you maybe just send me a quick note that I might be able to use around your experience or the success you had? Yeah, no problem, Jake. And then Matt writes out three sentences. Then what Jeremy does is he screenshots that and uses that as his either email or LinkedIn DM. Hey, and, and I know you're in this space or whatever. Here's actually what one of our customers just said about us. And so he sends that straight to prospects. And I know he's had a really high hit rate um, with that. So, all right. So we've got about, what time What time is it right now? It is 11.39 where I am at. So I've oh, got about 10 minutes for some Q&A here. So start dropping it in. I really hope this is helpful, everyone. You, I, I have, I have a, a couple of asks. A couple of asks for all of you, all 50 plus of you who are on right now. I've had a few hundred people on already, which is awesome. One, share the link to the Modern Outbound uh, playbook with your network. So share it with your network. It's free, it's a ton of value. You, don't, you can just put the link in the comments if you want, pull out a couple of the plays, take credit for them, I don't really care. 
share it with your network, right? That would be one of the most important things that I can think about here is that in particular, um, whenever you do that. So please do that, um, appreciate you. So number two is if you have a play or you know someone who is running the best plays, introduce them to me introduce them to us and the team at scale. Like I said, we're going to already starting to put together the Q1 version of this. So again, please share it with your network and please let me know if you have anybody who's out doing some really cool shit. Um, and then, yeah, please, let's see, where's the playbook? Um, Sebastian, um, you can, if you just scroll up in the comments, let me see if I can just grab it for you and just, we'll just drop it every few minutes here just because there's so much, getting a lot of good comments here, which I'm loving. Um, Shelby, can you just, uh, Craig, let me. It's in the comments. It's just you have to scroll up higher. We'll drop. I'll drop the link here in a second. Give me one. Let me just make sure Shelby will drop in. I was going to text her. Uh, drop the link again, please. Okay, we'll drop the link again. In the meantime, let's start getting the questions. The Q and A rolling. This is where I want to encourage all of you to be incredibly selfish. Um, all of you are out here hustling. You have very specific markets. You have very specific people that you're trying to get in touch with. Kevin, I love it. Kevin coming through, sharing the link for the ebook. My man, I appreciate you, Kevin. And it's awesome. Kevin, you're awesome. I appreciate it. So one of the questions we've got here, how do you structure your qualifying questions in a cold call? All right, that is a really great question. So all of you need to first understand most products only solve for like five things. That's it. Like, and, and by the way, most sales arguments can be boiled. Actually, all. All sales arguments, they come in one of four flavors. And if you're going to take notes, this is the part where I'd start taking notes. One, quality. I want a higher quality of something. Two, quantity. I want more of something. Three, time. I can save you time. I can give you time back. That's going to allow you to do X. Third, money. I can make you money. I can save you money. Every single outcome boils down to one of these four things. If you don't know what that is for your project, product, that's step number one. And, and I will tell you, just so you know, um, time savings is the worst argument, okay? Some products, unfortunately, it's all you have. I'm telling you because we as humans suck at, 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 at truly understanding time savings. We as humans don't really do very well understanding time savings and the value associated with it. Verse, I'm gonna make you money, more. We, we understand gains. In, in the book, Thinking Fast and Slow by this guy, Daniel, I think he said Kenneman, um, he talks a lot about this. We as humans, we, lo we love gains. We don't comprehend savings the same way. Now, we will do whatever it takes to avoid pain. That's a whole other thing. But again, for a lot of you, I just want you to think of that, that ideally you don't want an argument, a sales argument based on time savings it's just an uphill battle. Sometimes you got to do it just what your product does. But anyway, so going back to the question. So therefore I know for my buyer, what are the top five, like what are like then the, the five things that I solve for? So what you do then is I first, I lead with the one that most people have. So how I open it up, I, look, there's a million different ways to open your cold calls. I'm not going to get into like all the different tips. I'll give you guys like a quick high level on what we do and what we teach and what I teach and what's worked for me historically. Um, <clears throat> one is I always try to get bounced to the person. Right, so I call the main line, do whatever, or even if I go direct, I'll try to, um, I'll try to get into it. Muhammad, I'm going to talk about wasting money. I'll get into that one uh, after I give the cold call. Uh, so, the very first opening. Hey, John, I just had a conversation with, and let's say I didn't have a conversation, just so I don't use it the crush. Hey, John, um, I still would probably almost always say like I've talked to, a couple, I talked to a couple different people at ABC.com. They said you're responsible for basically the budget around talent acquisition. Is that right? Yeah, Jake, that's me. Okay, great. Look, I work with many other VPs of talent acquisition, specifically in industrial manufacturing. I know right now what's top of mind for many of those leaders is really about margins. And that's always been top of mind, but with COVID, that's been even more uh, more top of mind. Is, is margins and throughput one of the top areas that you're focused on right now, John? No. Let's say they say yes. If it's a yes, I go into great. Look, so... I. It, Great. I mean, that's, that's what I'm consistently hearing when I'm having those conversations. So look, a quick high level. So what, what we do at xyz.ai.org, whatever, uh, is we work with VPs, primarily in industrial manufacturing, and, and we help them control margins by one, two, three. Okay. And so what I want to do is set up a quick, and again, I want you to hear the language I use. I don't say what I'd like to do, what I'd love to do, 
what it would be great if we could do. I said, what I want to do. The best way, if you want to increase your conversions with cold calls, eliminate all the passive words. Could, should, would, would love. Yeah, how about this? If there's one word you eliminate for forever in your life, it's I would love to. You think anybody gives a shit what you would love to do? I would, well, John, I'd love to set up some, come on, man, be confident. Like you sell your product, you know what's going down. Stop saying I'd love to and start being like, you know, like, like confidence up and just ask, tell them what you want to do. So what I want to do is set up, let's just do like a quick 10 minutes give you a quick high level on what we do with other folks in this space. Then if it seems like a fit, we can loop in some other people. Does that work for you? So there's a couple of things in there. One, no pause. Sales, you have to know how to use pauses very strategically. In the cold call, I want your lizard brain reaction, not your frontal cortex reaction. If you don't know what I mean by that is, we as humans, when we hear logical things, do you like candy? Yes. But if I leave a pause, then you start to think about it. And you're like, well, I only like certain kinds of candy and blah, blah, blah. Not, look, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to book a meeting right now. Okay. So that's it. I mean, that's how I do it. And then if you say no, I go to problem number two. Actually, Jake, no, throughput. Okay, great. That's awesome. So I always acknowledge what somebody said. Great. That's awesome. So uh, other uh, VPs of manufacturing that I'm talking to, uh, you know, specifically in industrial manufacturing that then are worried about sales that they're getting more and more pressure from sales and marketing to make sure that the product's agile. Is that top of mind? No, that's not top of mind. Okay, great. Look, I'm glad. So last and final, the last thing we solve for is this. And then as they say no three times, I'm out. I say, look, so if you have problems around other things, I'll keep you in the loop, et cetera. So it goes, I try to go, and Brian Tracy, if you don't know BT, Brian Tracy is an old school like sales book person. Go check out Brian Tracy. It's called Yes, Yes, Close. Yes, I'm the person that handles it. Yes, I have this problem. Then I'm closing for the, the meeting. Yes, I'm this person. No, no, no. Later, Kevin. On to the next one. So that is what's up. Um, all right, keep the questions coming. I've got time for about two or three more. And I just want to ch thank all of you. Um, you know, we've got a ton, a ton, a ton of people sticking around. So this is this is a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy it. Um, Muhammad, what about wasting money? Again, um, wasting money is not as good as an argument as making money. Again. It's not that it's not a bad argument. And again, everyone, because I, this isn't about just their role. Yeah, of course, the CFO wants to make more money and save more money. This is just about how we as humans process things. We, you know, like if, if you ask the average person, I can save you 50 cents or I can make you 40. Most people are going to pick 40, right? Now, now how this argument flips on its head is when we talk about avoidance. We avoid pain. So if you can truly prove that I'm wasting the money, not just spending the money, then there's an argument there. So, so it, Muhammad, it's really tough without knowing your product. So I would just tell you to be very um, cognizant of, of what your argument it is. Is it like, is it one of those shitty ROI calculators, you know, where you're just like, well, I'm going to look at how my ROI... Guys, just so you know, no, no one has ever produced an ROI calculator in the history of sales that produced a negative return. <laughs> so if you're relying on some shitty ROI calculator to be your like end all be all, like it's not gonna work. Okay. So, but anyway, I hope that I hope that's helpful. Okay, so we got a question here from Jason Molnar. Jason, what is up? I uh, appreciate you for the question. Like I said, we get a couple more. Craig, I'm glad there's been some solid stuff in here. Um Craig Belcher also puts out a lot of really great content. If you guys don't follow Craig Belcher, go check him out. Um, how do you feel about CRM software to manage inbound, outbound? Uh, yes, dude, you have to. Like again, like I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, we use outreach. Um, we did it. We've done a ton of sales. We've done over 100 plus sales loft deployments too. You know, these tools. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm like. Uh, again, this is a, somewhat of a Jake fact, but at least 20% more efficiency. You know, I, I can just. I can't imagine some of these plays that I walked y'all through. Imagine if you were trying to remember that across 200 different prospects you're reaching out to. You couldn't do it. So Jason, I would highly invest. There's some there's some cheaper ones. A friend of mine actually is the CEO of a company called Mailshake. Go check out Mailshake. It's all email-based. There's another one called reply.io. There's another one kind of like real simple. But if you're going to go spend 100 bucks, 120, I'd go check out Outreach. Um, I think it's a really good, I think it's a great tool. You know, And even if you're just doing pure outbound, you almost can just use Outreach. You know, if you don't, if you're not trying to manage your pipeline, you know, you don't even, 
need it. Now, Salesforce just came out with uh, Salesforce High Velocity. The UI is complete dog shit, but the product apparently is like not not too terrible. So you can go check that out too. Uh, let's see. Here we go. I've got one more question. Someone popped in here. Um, at least I thought I said one. Oh, Gerard, I didn't. I skipped over your question, which is um, I walked through the best ways to, to construct a cold call. So for me, that's what works for me. Hey, John, I've talked to a couple people. They suggested you handle this component. Is that right? Yes. Great. I hate, I've always hated, I've always worked. How are you today? I've hated, um, what's the other one? What was one Aaron Ross had that worked? It worked for a long time until everyone started using it. It was like, ah, shit, I can't remember. It's like hoping you can help or something. I don't remember what it was. I just wasn't mine. I'm, I'm a confident. I like to lead with confidence. I like to lead with, look, I'm an expert. I'm a peer. Like I got here somehow, etc. The other benefit I have in cold calling is I'm from Missouri. Okay. And so, and so when times get really tough, okay, or, or I'm calling in, I can just get a little Missouri on people, right? Missouri, uh, right? You see the difference between Missouri uh, and Missouri. -E. I normally say Missouri, -E, but I can get Missouri. -uh. So like, let's say the gatekeeper, this is another, like one of my favorite cold call techniques. And my, my very first boss taught me this, um, Clark Beacom, shout out to Clark Beacom. He's now the CRO of the new Austin MLS team. Um, <clears throat> so I, I call the gatekeeper. I go, hi, my name's Jake Dunlap. I'm, I'm with, uh, I can't remember, Tampa Bay Rays or whatever. I, I apologize. I have tried three different times to find who handles corporate entertainment. Like what, is that marketing? Yeah, that'd probably be Cheryl Henderson. Uh, shucks thank you so much actually i apologize i told you my name but i didn't ask yours oh ha, 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 it's rachel okay thank you so much rachel can you chance for me to to mrs whatever's office fantastic that worked for me and then the old and then i get to her office and i say hey cheryl hope you're doing great i've had a i've talked to a few different people they've triangulated me to you so hopefully this is the right world if not you can put me there i just talked i had a good conversation with darlene a second ago there so blah 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 and then i launch into it right? There's no, I'm not nervous. I'm not scared. I'm not any of that crap, right? I'm, I deserve to be here. Um, so that's how I open all of my calls. So um, to answer Gerard's question real quick, um, cold emails always start very, very front out of the gate, custom. Got to be a custom first sentence, right? Hey, John, I saw this. This is what I saw, this thing, blah, blah, blah. I talked to so-and-so. That first sentence has got to say like, okay, this is real, right? Then I go into common pain points in their micro industry. This is where, this is what's up. You know, it's like, um, people don't understand what I, what I became a student of early in sales is the nuances between industries. So it, telling someone you sell into manufacturing just shows that you don't even know what the hell manufacturing is. The, the difference is that an operations leader has, if they're in industrial manufacturing, consumer packaged goods, aviation, a director of operations, depending on what type of manufacturing they're in, literally could um, do a million different things. Um, you know, so I think I want a lot of you all to think about that is I want you to think about um, if you don't know the nuances of their industry, they can't help them. Yusuf, yes, you can try that in Lincoln, Nebraska. I spent a summer in Lincoln um, and have family there. So, so draw, that's how I start my emails. How I start my emails is like something custom I know about them paint like, hey, working with other VPs of ops in industrial manufacturing, I know this thing is top of mind. Then relative ref reference points. Let me just tell you this. I got the worst cold email ever this morning. Jake, we work with people like Walmart and blah, blah, blah to help them with a similar issue. I'm like, uh, I run a 30 person <laughs> consulting company. So there's nothing worse than bad customer references. So, but that, that's what I've, I've always been successful with. Relevant industry, relevant competitors, relevant location. Even better if you say, can say Pacific Northwest or in Florida or whatever. So that's it. So Yusuf, I'm going to make you the last question for today. What's an efficient way to create a list of past customers um, who don't use us in the new company? So LinkedIn Sales Navigator is the best way that I know to do this. Um, and then the other thing that I want all of you to do is I want you to put all of your current contacts into a list so you can see when they ch change jobs too, right? So you can get that little notification of so-and-so change jobs, right? Um, that pops right up. So Sales Navigator, Yusuf, is basically you could build a list and I could call this past customers would be the name of this list that I'd build. And then what I would do is there's a, a one of the one of the search criteria is previous employer. 
and I would dump in as a previous employer, all of my relevant target customers. Like let's say they're in finance, like she was like she or he was in finance. So all of my relevant XYZ companies in the sectors that I control. <coughs> and then I would go to, and you can type in which department they're in. So I could say marketing at Raytheon. So it would be marketing and it would be at all those different companies. And then I would see out of my target list of companies who's in there. So that's what I would do, Yusuf. That to me is like the best thing that I could do. Yusuf, what happened to your accent? Um, I still drop into it, especially like if I'm around. In Missouri, we don't really have an accent. Missouri is more like neutral than anything. I feel like something out depends. My mom, my mom does say washing machine, which I have to correct her on every single time because she, when she talks to my six-year-old about, you know, did you, oh, did you wash it? I'm like, no, we don't wash things, mom. We wash things. So that, my friends, is this Monday's Ask Jake Anything. Um, I don't know who we've got up next week. That The week after next, I know we've got Jeff Gittimer. So if you guys don't know Jeff Gittimer, he wrote like the, one of the most classic books called The Little Red Book of Sales. So uh, me and Jeff are going to mix it up a week from Monday. Make sure you tune in. Um, Shelby, if you don't mind, can you drop? Well, here, I'll just drop the link again. I got it right here. Um, uh, make sure you download the modern ebook, the modern sales playbook here. The other thing that I would suggest all of you to do is if you don't already on every, what is it? Every, when do I do it? I guess I do it every, there you go. There's the link right there. This is great. Ooh, I like this little feature here. It's kind of nice. Modern Outbound Playbook 2020, bit.ly forward slash Modern Outbound Playbook 2020. Shelby, maybe we can drop it in there one more time. But if you don't, I want you all to uh, tune in on Fridays at 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern. It's the recap. Um, yeah, this week's going to be a little different, right? I've been on vacation. I'm going on vacation after this, so I might have some fun. I always do a, uh, a soundtrack, right? Last week. What did I do last week? Is that Drake? Did I do Drake last week? Yeah, I think I did Drake last week. So if you all don't, if you don't like hip hop and R and B, you're not you might may or may not like some of the soundtracks. Um, so I, I have to. Oh, I did Kanye. That's right. I did old school Kanye. In in honor of new Kanye, who I'm not the biggest fan of, I did old school Kanye. There's so many just great, amazing old school Kanye songs. So every Friday, same thing. I go live 9:30 Eastern. I talk through Shelby. I'm with you. I miss the old Kanye. I think we all miss the old Kanye. I think even Kim. I think even Kim, and I know the rest, I know Chris Kardashian definitely misses the old Kanye, but I think even Kim misses the old Kanye. So make sure you tune in on every Fridays. Next Monday, same time as usual, Ask Jake Anything. Um, we'll be going down next week. And then, like I said, I got Jeff Gittimer coming up in a couple weeks. So have a great week, everyone. I'm going to get out, play some golf, chill with the fam the rest of this week. But again, I will be going live Friday morning. So make sure you tune in 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern. Um, feel free to send me your music suggestions as well to have an amazing rest of your week and we'll see you in a few days.